In part two of this lesson, I'll show you three more examples on how to graph quadratic and cubic absolute functions. The question reads, graph each of the following functions and we'll start with question A. We have y is equal to the absolute of the expression shown on your screen. The first thing that I'll do is graph this as if this part were positive. So I have y is equal to x squared minus x minus 6. I like to graph by factoring, so I'll factor this by trial and error. What two numbers multiply to negative 6 and add to negative 1? negative 3 and positive 2. So I can rewrite this as y is equal to x minus 3 and x plus 2. Solving, I set y is equal to 0 and I should end up with the point 3 and 0 and negative 2 and 0. Plotting these on an xy plane, we should have a point right here and a point right here. Now that we found these critical points and graphed them, we need to find the vertex. And the vertex can be found by taking the average of the x-coordinates. The average is taken by adding them up, so 3 plus negative 2 and dividing by 2. That's equal to 0 decimal 5. Let's go ahead and substitute this back into our equation to find the y-coordinate. The expression is shown on your screen. You should end up with negative 25 over 4. Negative 25 over 4 is equivalent to negative 6.25. So Starting here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and a quarter down, and we'll connect these. We'll sketch this as best as we can, and that represents our graph. Now, you have to redo this as if this were negative. So you're supposed to find out what your vertex is if we had y is equal to negative bracket x squared minus x minus 6. And you'll find out that if you solve for your x-intercepts, you'll end up with the same two points. However, your vertex will be different. Rather than being 0 0.5 and negative 25 over 4, it'll be 0 0.5 and positive 25 over 4, which is positive 6.25. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and a quarter up. So this is what your other graph should look like had the expression been negative. What you're supposed to do next, as we did in part one, is test values to the left, to the right, and in between the critical points. And you should find that if you test any x value in between these two, you'll never end up with a negative output. In other words, anything below the horizontal axis shouldn't exist. Let's go ahead and erase it. So what you see on your screen is the graph for question A. Let's move on to question B. The quadratic in this absolute function can be factored by decomposition. In other words, you multiply negative 2 and negative 3 together, you end up with positive 6. Then you find two numbers that multiply to positive 6 and add to 5, that's 3 and 2. If you factor this correctly, you should end up with an expression that looks like this. Now, of course, setting y is equal to 0, you can solve for x. If I set y is equal to 0, I end up with a point that's 1 and 0, and a point at 1.5 and 0. Now let's go ahead and plot these. Given the fact that these are so close together, I'm going to assume that every three blocks is one. So that's one, that's two. So our first point should be at one and zero right here, and our second point should be right here. Next, I need to find the vertex, so I take the average of the x-coordinates. One plus 1.5 divided by two is 1.25. That's the x-coordinate of the vertex, and substituting this back into your equation, whether it be this one or this one, will give you 1 over 8, which is equivalent to 0 0.125. Plotting this, 1.25 is a quarter distance, so let's say over here, and 0 0.125, if we assume that this is 1 and that's 2, that's really close to here. Connecting these, you should have a quadratic that looks like that. Given the same pattern that we used in the previous question, I don't need to go ahead and resolve this. All I have to do is switch the y coordinate of my vertex here to negative. So I'll have a point at 1.25 and negative 1 over 8. Therefore, my graph should be a reflection going this way. And we'll assume that our point's right there, going upwards. And anything below these two critical points don't exist. That right there is the graph to question B. And finally, moving on to C, we have our first cubic function of this video. 
luckily our cubic function is factorable because otherwise graphing cubic functions isn't fun to do without using a graph or a calculator. This one is common factorable, so I'll pull out an x, I end up with x to the power of 2 minus 1. Setting y is equal to 0, I end up with x is equal to 0 as one of the x coordinates. And this is a difference of squares, that's the same thing as saying x minus 1 times x plus 1. So if I solve for x minus 1, I'll end up with x is equal to 1, and over here I'll end up with x is equal to negative 1. So I have three points, x is equal to 0, 1, and negative 1. Now that we graphed these points, I'm not going to go into too much detail as to how to graph this particular function. It's best probably to use a table or technology. And what you see on your screen is the actual graph using a graphing calculator. So you should have something that looks like this. Now the opposite would have been true had this been negative. So technically you would have had a reflection. Substituting now points in between, you would find out that none of these outputs would exist. And there you have it. That is how to graph quadratic and cubic absolute functions.